this week our composer is Schubert. Um, and so I have another story to share with you. This is another um, famous children's story. So this is a story about Schubert when he was a child. The Viennese schoolmaster picked up his pen and began to write the letter. At last it was quiet. His pupils had gone home. For a few short hours, the Lichtenstahl school would be just his family's home again until tomorrow when they would all be back. Mr. Schubert had heard that the headmaster of the Leopoldstadt school had died. That would be the school for me, he sighed. So here he was applying for the job. He wrote, when I came to the Lichtenstahl school, it had such a bad name that there were no students. I used my own money to furnish the school and pay an assistant. Now I have 174 students. Many of them are so poor that I teach them for nothing. Please give me the opportunity to work in a well-equipped school so I can prove how good I am. But Mr. Schubert was disappointed. The job went to someone else. One year later, on January 31st, 1797, his wife gave birth to their fourth son. The schoolmaster wondered how he would find the money to look after them all. He looked in the cradle at his baby son. We'll give him my name, he said. He shall be called Franz. When Franz was three years old, his father and mother moved to a bigger house. Now they had 300 students. There was not enough money to pay an assistant, so Ignaz, the eldest son, helped Mr. Schubert. Soon the other sons, Ferdinand and Karl, would be teaching, and Franz too, when he was old enough. Father, there is nothing more I can teach him. He should be learning from a real musician. Ignaz looked at his father who frowned. I said I didn't mind you teaching Franz the piano, but you know I can't afford to pay a teacher for him. But father, he is really good and he sings beautifully too. Couldn't you talk to Michael Holzer? I'll see what I couldn't do, grumbled his father. Mr. Holzer put down the wine glass that was always in his hand. He looked at Franz and smiled. That was excellent, Franz, he said. You never cease to amaze me. I must go now, Mr. Holzer. Father is helping me with my Latin tonight. They want a boy soprano at the convict school. I have to sing for the director, Antonio Salieri. I'm not afraid of singing, but the Latin test really scares me. <coughs> oh, look at him. He looks like a miller's son. It was the morning of October 1st, 1808, and all the boys were lined up waiting to sing for the examiners. They stared when Franz Schubert joined the line. Franz felt uncomfortable in his pale blue coat that had faded so much it was almost white. He was a small, he was small, stumpy, and wore steel-rimmed spectacles. He was 11 years old and very shy. Next, please. Franz stood in front of the three judges. Soon, Antonio Salieri was asking him to sing, and the headmaster was, test was testing his Latin verbs. Thank you very much. You may go now. Franz went back to his father, who was waiting outside. It won't be long, father. The judges are deciding. The headmaster looked at the anxious young faces. He must not keep them in suspense. The two sopranos, Milner and Schubert, performed excellently. As they also passed all the school tests with high marks, they will join the court chapel choir and attend the convict school next term. Well done, Franz, his father smiled proudly. You have brought honor to the family. Be before long, Franz was looking smart in his new school uniform. Stand still, your hat's crooked, Ferdinand laughed as he straightened the special chorister's hat on his brother's head. Soon Franz must leave his family. When it was time to go, he smiled bravely as he waved goodbye. Franz shivered. It was freezing cold in school, for there was no heat. I would give anything for a bowl of hot soup, he murmured as his tummy rumbled with hunger. School food is horrible and the portions are so small. Alone in the practice room, he took out his music paper and began to compose. Soon he had forgotten how cold and hungry he was. He was happy writing music. Tell us how you spend your day. Franz was home on a rare visit. 
Well, apart from my schoolwork, I am the orchestra assistant. I string the violins, light the candles, and make sure the instruments and scores are in place. I play the violin every day as well as sing in the choir. We give concerts and I play the piano. Sometimes we perform my music. Don't neglect your schoolwork, warned his father. I think you are spending too much time on music. You have to be a school teacher when you grow up, not a musician. Back at school, Franz told his friend, Joseph von Spahn, father isn't too pleased with me. He doesn't approve of my music, but I composed a new minuet without him knowing. Would you like to hear it? It's a beautiful, Franz, said Joseph. Look, here is some more music paper for you. You are kind, Joseph. Please don't tell father I am composing. Promise me. Of course. Now listen, put your music away. Have you heard the news? Napoleon is back with his troops and they're marching into the city. Dr. Lang has forbidden us to take part, but the seniors have decided to take no notice and are forming a student corps to help defend Vienna. How dare you disobey me, Dr. Lang was waiting when the boys returned. Go to your rooms at once. We're going again tomorrow, Joseph whispered to Franz. When they returned the next day, Dr. Lang locked them in their rooms. The boys were watching cannonballs fly across the night sky. Napoleon's soldiers had set fire to many buildings and the glow of the flames could be seen for miles. Suddenly, a cannonball landed in one of the fountains in University Square in front of the school. Inside the school, a deafening noise was heard. Someone screamed. Smoke was pouring down a staircase and Franz looked at Joseph in horror. The school's on fire! The boys, pale with fear, ran to see. We all could have been killed. Franz stared at the huge hole the cannonball had gone right through the building before exploding as it hit the ground. Some time later, the tears streamed down Franz's cheeks. Oh, Joseph, I can't believe it. The headmaster had just told him of his mother's death. He went home for her funeral. For 11 months, his poor father struggled on alone. But the following April, Dr. Lang had good news for Franz. The boy was going home again, but this time for a happy event. On April 13, 1813, his father married Anna Kleinbach. When he was 15, Franz's voice broke and his days as a choir boy were over. Franz Schubert crowed for the last time, July 26, 1812, he wrote. He was so hungry. He wrote home asking Ferdinand to lend him some money for food. You know what it's like to long for bread and an apple since school lunch is miserable and I have to wait eight and a half hours for a supper that's even worse. Yet Franz dreaded leaving school. He did not want to become a schoolmaster like his father. His kind stepmother understood. Whenever his father gave her some extra money, she saved it in a stocking. Anything in the stocking, mother? asked Franz when he visited her. There was always a coin or two for him. Franz Schubert worked as a schoolmaster for only three years. He hated it. He was happier as a musician, even though he knew he would be poor for the rest of his life. He became a great composer and wrote nine symphonies. The most famous is number eight in B minor, the unfinished, which has only two movements and was found in a drawer after he died in 1828. Among the 600 beautiful songs he wrote were the trout and the wild rose. And if you are watching this video on Facebook, in the comment section, you will find two listening links. One um, is to an excerpt of the Unfinished Symphony as it was written, and the second is a remix. So enjoy those, please. <laughs> 